it's Julie the Bibliophile here and today I am here to start a new video series that I just discovered and that is Top 5 Wednesday. <music> Top 5 Wednesday is a group on Goodreads where basically everyone talks about different top fives that they have for different categories that are posted each week. It was created by Ginger Reads Laney and I will link the Goodreads group in the description below so that you can start reading the topics, joining, and making top five Wednesday videos. So my first top five Wednesday video is luckily the first top five Wednesday video of March and I'm super excited about that. And this week we have top five book hangovers. I define a book hangover as a book that took you a really long time to get over, that like maybe for a long time afterwards you could not stop thinking about this book. Sometimes when I know I've had a book hangover I get that really awful feeling in the pit of my stomach where it's like you kind of just feel like an empty hole in the pit of your stomach and it really gets you thinking and just like existential crisis sometimes like this book, this book, this book usually involves a lot of crying. So let's get started. My number five book hangover is 13 Reasons Why by Jay Asher. Now, I selected this one because this one really, when I talk about that weird feeling in the pit of your stomach, like that empty hole, I definitely got that with this one. This book really got me thinking a lot about life and relationships with people and how I act in my life and what life means. And it was just so much existentialism. I couldn't stop thinking about this book constantly. This is one of the most influential books I've ever read, but it really just left me in a state of whoa. That state of whoa that you can't even describe, that's a book hangover to me, and that I definitely got from 13 Reasons Why. My number four biggest book hangover of all time is The Fate of Ten by Pitticus Lore from the Lorian Legacies series. It this is the sixth book in the Lorian Legacy series, the penultimate. The book that came before this was The Revenge of Seven, which really was a big letdown for me, and I know a lot of the fans did not like Revenge of Seven at all, and we really needed this book to pick up the series. And it did just that. The whole entire book, I was loving it. I was reading this book so fast. I'm like, wow, Lorian Legacies, ha! I loved it so much. And then... Something happened at the end of this book that I don't want to spoil, but I can't even talk about how bad this book hangover was without spoiling it, so I will put spoilers up on the screen until I'm done mentioning that, and if you're currently reading the Lorian Legacy series or planning on it, and you have not read this book yet, if you have not finished this book yet, mute it and then come back when that's over. So, if you guys know me, if you've watched my videos before, been on my Tumblr, you know that Sarah is my favorite character from this book. Sarah is my girl. I hate that everybody hates her. Sarah is my love. I love her. I loved watching her in the books. I love John and Sarah together. And before this book came out, like a month before this book came out and reading this book, I was getting so many John and Sarah feels. All my John and Sarah feels were coming back, and I was so excited. I'm like, yeah, Fate of Ten, we're probably going to get some more John and Sarah that we didn't really get in Revenge of Seven. I was so excited, and then we weren't getting a lot of John and Sarah in the book, and I'm like, oh my god, I can't believe to wait for this. And then, the end of the book... What really pisses me off about this is, no, Sarah, not, the, not just that Sarah died. Not, she didn't just die. She didn't just die at the end of the book. She didn't just die in the last chapter. She didn't just die on the last page. She died on the last line. And that's so, that's such an awful way to end a book. Like, forget cliffhangers. That's just a horrible way to end a book. It left such a sour taste in my mouth for a book that I had enjoyed so much to end it like that. And I remember with all my John and Sarah feels, like, I usually a couple of days after I, I know half of an OTP dies, I can't listen to love songs for a while. I can't listen to songs that I thought fit them. While I was reading this book, I was really going through a phase where I really loved the song Cheerleader by Omi. And I was relating it to a lot of different couples, but I was really relating it while I was reading this book to John and Sarah. Because I'm like, hey, not only does it fit them, but Sarah used to be a cheerleader. So it's kind of cool. And then I couldn't listen to the song for like a week, and so I stopped loving the song, and for like a month I barely listened to the song when I had had it constantly on replay like ten times a day. It was my favorite song at the time. And then my love for it dissipated. Now it's growing in again. When I hear the song, I'll sing out loud just like I used to. 
but I could have had a love affair with Cheerleader for such a longer time if it were not for this book. And what really left me with the biggest hangover thing was that, you know, you're on the last chapter and you think, hey, look at that! People almost died, but everybody survived the penultimate! Everybody survived the final battle! What do you know? That's so crazy! That's never happened! And then, no. And the fact that this is a book series where you can heal people to stop them from dying and she still died is just totally unfair to me. Really hope maybe there's a loophole in 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 the next one. I don't remember what it's called, but the next one that comes out, I really hope there's a loophole because I was always championing for one to come back, but a death in in Lorian Legacies has never hurt me like this one hurt me because it's my favorite character. I just didn't want to go to school the next morning. I really hate that there's only one couple left in the series that's not half dead or fully dead, and they're not even fully canon yet. Great. My number three book hangover of all time is Seven Minutes in Heaven by Sarah Shepard, the final book in the Lion Game series. I was so attached to this series for like three years. It was so good and I love the murder mystery so much despite the annoying pattern that existed. And the end of this book killed me. Again, I loved this whole book. I loved it so much and then the end killed me. And I'm gonna have spoilers again because I can't really talk about book hangovers without spoilers. So look out for spoilers again. So it really pissed me off that Ethan was the murderer. Like, I kind of predicted it from the first book, but then I didn't think it even possible. It kind of just seemed like a loophole, a cop-out. I already didn't like that there had been so many possible suspects and annoying pattern in the series. But to have it be Ethan in the end, like, I get it was a big twist, but it was like, it was an unnecessary twist. E Emma and Ethan had become one of my top ten, top five book couples of all time. I love them so much, especially in this book that it became so important. He was the only person she had left in the world during this book, and he turned out to be the murderer. This also left me like 13 Reasons Why with a lot of existentialism, with everybody finding out that Sutton was dead, and then the funeral got me thinking a lot about life and death and friendships and this was really my first experience with having that empty feeling that you can't describe in the pit of your stomach after reading a book and you want to know the worst thing about this the night I finished this book I left to go on vacation with my family to drive to Florida and you know <laughs> so I sat on the couch reading this book I saw my eyes out I finished it sitting there contemplating life and everything and being totally totally sad and 20 minutes later, I had to leave for Disney World. Like, come on. It was just so horrible. It was so horrible. And for like a month afterwards, every time I saw my friends, I'm like, I love you guys so much. I love you. I love you. I love you. Oh, this book. Why did you do this to me? My last two book hangovers should really come as no surprise, but my number two book hangover of all time is Allegiant by... Veronica Roth, the final book in the Divergent series. Oh my god. 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 This this book was my first... What happens at the end of this book was really my first experience with that in a book. I had never experienced anything like that before. This was the first time I ever, like, actually shed tears reading a book. Normally when I read a book, like, if I didn't actually see it happening, like, on a TV screen... I couldn't cry. This book, I sobbed one of the most times I've ever sobbed in my entire life. I sobbed for a good half hour after I read this book. I just... And now I cry with, like, every book I read. Like, this book changed my book reading habits. And I just... I remember reading this book. It was only, like, 12.30 at night when I finished it. And I remember just sitting there crying for a good 20 minutes. And I'm like, well... I don't want to go to sleep. Like, I honest to God don't want to go to sleep right now, but I also don't want to go on Tumblr or watch anything because I don't want to be happy. Like, I just didn't want to exist after I finished this book. And it was kind of the weirdest feeling, like, that detached feeling, the empty feeling in the pit of your stomach. That was my biggest experience with it was with this book. So I went on Tumblr and I poured my heart out for, like, the post had to be, like, that long. I just poured my heart out, everything I was feeling about it, on Tumblr, how much this book destroyed me, and I wore black for like a week after I finished this book. It was so bad. This book hangover was so bad. Like, and it, it, this book also kind of killed the series for me. Like, I don't even care about Divergent that much anymore. And I, oh god.
And my biggest book hangover of all time, if you have not guessed it, is Blood of Olympus by Rick Riordan. Now, when I read this book, I did not know. We didn't know about Trials of Apollo yet, so I thought this was the end of Percy Jackson. Now, I didn't really experience a book hangover with Harry Potter. I don't remember if I did, because I read those books in, like, fourth grade once they were already all out. They were all in publication, had been for a long time. But Percy Jackson, I grew up with. Like, I read the first series after they had all been published, and then I stopped for a few years. I didn't read Heroes of Olympus. But after the first three books were out, I started reading Heroes of Olympus, and I waited for them to come out every year and I just read them and for Percy Jackson to end for me was so awful like because this was a series that I really really had grown up with in that sense and I had so many memories of reading this series and to think it was all over plus the ending totally screwed me up again but I was just thinking about nothing but Percy Jackson and how much I missed Percy Jackson and Blood of Olympus and it's all I could focus on for a good two weeks. If you look up book hangover in the dictionary like it should be Juliana after reading Blood of Olympus like that's just it was so bad the epitome of a book hangover in just yeah it was so such a big book hangover I can't so this is my first top five Wednesday I hope you guys enjoyed it and I will see you next week bye